So. Yeah, so let's go into maybe uh, the creative process. All right, so, so if we talk about the, the creative process, um, I think this is where, you know, it goes back to the question of how much does it cost to produce one video? I think when people ask that question, it's kind of missing the whole point of the, of the, of the strategy, right? Which is you have to have what we call a discovery session or the creative process. Why are you doing this, you know, with phot photography or, or with video or anything? What is it? Who's your target audience? Like the whole, the whole slew, right? So to actually, well, I'll, I'll throw it over to you guys. One, what is the creative process and or what is the, what are the key points of the discovery process with the initial client when you, when you have that initial talk with clients? I guess the, the first thing would probably be why do you need a video? What is the purpose of this video? What are you trying to say? Yeah. Are you trying to promote something? Are you trying mm -hmm. to promote someone or a product? Or, and, and what are you trying to say about that thing? And mm -hmm. why does it need to be video? Um, although maybe I, I would say, of course it needs to be video. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, we can kind of start focusing on, the, all right, well, what is this going to look like? Uh, who's going to be in it, where are we going to shoot, what kind of location, what kind of image do we want, is this going to be a very uh, corporate style video or is it going to be something more casual and relaxed and we can start, you know, uh, moving up and down the spectrum mm -hmm. from there. And I, I, I think that, you know, in order of questions, that those should be the initial questions and then how much does it cost is at the end. Once we know what is involved, yeah. then we can give a price on, on what that is going to cost, right? Yeah, and I think knowing what's involved it really is is part of. I mean, it comes through the discovery, but being able to understand the scope of the project and that because uh, scope creep is one of the the biggest uh, um, troublemaker <laughs> troublemaking aspects of 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 this process because uh, you you need to define where. A project begins and where it ends and that and 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 sometimes you know there's always room for you know play in that and and as far as you know you're saying about the the creative process uh, and that will help determine you know some of the boundaries that that need to be um, found yeah 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 determined or determined. Out, like, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. did you find that as well did you have a, a, a discovery session for Maybe individual products or, or more larger scale? Uh, well, on the in individual ones? side, it's probably easier to, for me to define what the creative process is because for me, it starts from the moment they arrive into the studio and how we react and how we form a relationship and get comfortable, how I get them to relax, then how I get them in front of the camera. And of course, the, the, the common phrase is, you know, get it right in camera. And of course, I do everything to get it right in camera in terms of lighting and getting them positioned well and posing well. And then the creative process continues or at least doubles up when it goes into the post-production side. I start looking at the pictures and there's a lot of pictures that I'm not comfortable, not happy with. There's a lot of things that might need to be done in terms of um, color toning and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, doing something with the backgrounds, etc. And so it's a continuous process. But I also tell the person who I'm photographing is, you know, this is... Um, we're, we're going to do this. It's not just me that's going to take this good picture. You're going to engage with me so that I can get a good picture. So it's a two-way process. We both got to contribute to getting the final product, which is a picture that you say you're happy with, that you actually say, wow, I didn't know I looked that good, you know? So that for me is, is that kind of overall arc of how it, it's structured from the very moment to the very end delivery. And there's lots of different parts in between. And each of those parts are all important because they all contribute to the final product. Yep. No, and that's a valid point because we, we come across the same, you know, issues as well. Like we, we want, um, we, we have our idea of the way it should be shot or the way it should, you know, uh, be structured. But then also the client wants it structured in a, in a different way that maybe we don't agree with, right? So we, we have to have that common back and forth. Like you said, it, it is that relationship. Um, and that's what we found is just, it's not just black and white, like, okay, shoot, done, edit, final, you know, it is that back and forth of the creative process. And, and we've had that. I mean, um, we've had that love and hate relationship with our, some of our clients, <laughs> right? Where it's like, okay, we agree with that. We don't agree with that. But I mean, again, I think that's part of the whole process, right? You, you do have the discovery session, which is the initial one. 
Uh, and that's kind of a, an outline of what might happen or what, what, you know, the way it's supposed to go. But then the creative process is along the way is how do you get to the, the final cut, right? And, and that's all that matters. Um, and, and we've come across that as well. I mean, where do you think the most critical part is in that creative process? You mean from like, from the initial start of it or in post-production once we're in like editing? I, I don't know, phases? what I found is like, I, I think in general when we sit down with clients, we, we understand what they kind of want to have, right? But then I think what happens a lot of times is um, as we're posting drafts or something, they yeah. so that's what the idea changes or the concept changes. And then and that's where we have to, you know, kind of have that relationship with the client to, to say like, this is what it should be, but if they want it to go somewhere else, then we have to adapt accordingly. So that's what I was gonna say is that in the post-production part of the process, that's where I, I see these kind of issues creeping up mm -hmm. a lot. And I, I think a lot, a lot, sometimes that's also something that I think can be uh, prevented mm -hmm. with a proper uh, start, start to the creative process and you know, in pre-production and just managing expectations and, and so that they understand what this, you know, they, 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 they can see cameras, they can see the room we're shooting in. They, have, they, may, they may not have any idea what that's going to look like. Right. Uh, in in the end, so yeah. um, or they or they just change their mind and decide they want to do something else with it, um, and that's that's probably the bigger headache area yeah, yeah, is yeah. when uh, in once we've already uh, completed a shoot and then we're starting to they want to cover change cover, yeah, cover yeah, new yeah, territory yeah. that wasn't discussed initially. Well, and, and, yeah, go ahead, James. And, yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say uh, that maybe uh, I, I think in any, in any kind of uh, video production, uh, so much importance needs to fall upon uh, pre-production, really, because everything that you discuss during discovery and then, and then, the, and then developing your pre-production, because... After that, if you do good pre-production, then production goes smoothly, and then post-production, when you start presenting results to the client and that. And, and then I think that's where the, the expectations, if you can prepare your client for, okay, this is basically what we're going at as part of our creative uh, presentation for you and, and that. So, Expectations are met, and and like you say, sometimes the uh, you know the client will go, could we change this a little bit like this, or, you know, and 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 we we can oblige sometimes. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do, but uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and over that, I, I don't know, if Dermot, if you've come across this as well, but we you know going back to the the marketing versus branding issue, like hmm. a lot of times the the bigger companies that we work with. We, we always uh, have to uh, follow the marketing guide, like the global marketing guidelines, right? Which is very important for a company to keep the, the brand and everything in the marketing. Um, but a lot of times what we find is that, you know, they don't have enough local content mm. to actually balance the, the brand here and, or make the brand stronger in Japan, right? So we, we come across a lot of times where um, you know, we, and this is part of the discovery process is like, how much freedom do we have on the color or the transitions or the slides or those kind of things? Um, do you, do you come across that with photography? Uh, not too much, okay. not too much, uh, because I'm usually it's working individual, with individuals yeah. rather than anything else. And so it can be incorporated into things. So I, I don't really come across that in the way I think you'd come across it in, on the video side. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, well, obviously, we want to appeal to the branding and and maybe some of the the, the design that the the company is using certain color palettes and and uh, and uh, uh, fonts and, mm -hmm. and and whatnot. Yeah, definitely, and and I think that's what um, you know. A lot of what, what we found anyway is that um, like the larger companies that that we're starting to work with now is like they they're not really well supported. Uh, with video or even photography um, locally here, right? So that's kind of what we provide, that we, we're more than happy to work with the global marketing team and, and you know, go back and have that discovery session. Because I, I think that really helps. Like one of the more recent ones that we've worked on, 
that went like clockwork because the global marketing team was involved. We knew what their expectations were and, and where everything is. So it, yeah, it makes the process a lot less painless. Yeah. A lot less painful. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot less painful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was thinking too, I mean, just part of that, uh, again, the pre-production is so important and I'm just thinking about a lot of the shoots that we do, uh, we will sit down and we'll figure out uh, seating arrangements and its relationship to walls or windows and what is that going to look like in the, in the background, the time of day, uh, lighting, what the weather might be like during that particular day, we don't always know, but, but by having the, the, this in mind, we're, we're better prepared. So when we come in to do the shoot, we can, we've got the lighting set up proper, properly to get the, the exposure right. And, uh, and, and all those things have to be thought out before we get to the location to arrive on the set. Because uh, if you don't have that, then, then you, you're just not going to look very professional when you get there and you're like, oh. Well, or worse, you do. just don't know, you, you know you, that something's going to throw a curve or something like that, right? And, so that, and it happens. There's too, always yeah. curves anyway, yeah. no, matter, <laughs> no matter how much you prepare. But yeah. the idea is to minimize that as much as possible. Yeah, definitely.